the Palestinians are under a lot of pressure from the population and from the Arab street as a whole not to yield to any American inducement. It will be very difficult for Mahmoud Abbas to maintain the quote-unquote the moderate line. Most people have realized that the U.S. is not an honest broker. Trump is taking it to a very, very extreme level. There's no strategy. Trump primarily driven by domestic considerations. He wants to prove that unlike Bill Clinton or George W. Bush, he's the one who broke all the protocols and all the traditions of U.S. foreign policy and accomplished it to show his base that you know what, I am the kind of politician who is loyal to you and who keeps your faith. Now, Trump did not say anything about East or West Jerusalem. He kind of left that open, although he said Jerusalem as a blanket or an umbrella phrase. Do you think that there might be a chance that he will back paddle or amend his or, you know, uh, be more specific and say, well, actually, I'm, you know, I, I see two Jerusalems and uh, two capitals. Palestinians and uh, some of their Arab backers will try to apply pressure to try and create the distinction. Trump did not speak about Jerusalem as the capital of the Palestinians at all. Trump also said, this is how it has been and we are simply recognizing reality. Israel occupies the whole of Jerusalem, west and east. He is least inclined to make any concessions. If you see Trump's ideology, he is very closely linked to the far-right Jewish and Christian groups and I don't think they, he will ever back track from this. Rather, he has left some kind of ambiguity saying, you know, the final status has to be decided through negotiations. If those negotiations, if and when they ever start, cannot see any role for the U.S. One party will not be willing to engage with the U.S. at all. Hamas has actually said that Friday should be the first day of Intifada. Intifada, the concept, I believe, in present times may be a little bit amorphous. Unlike the first two Intifadas, the leadership of the Palestinian is scattered. Even though there have been reconciliation between Fatah and Hamas, they're not united United um, pushing for it, unlike during Yasser Arafat's time. Even last year, there was talk of an intifada, and there were a series of like stabbings, a knife attack, a checkpoint, continuous low-level violence. Those were also labeled as an intifada. But what ultimately happened is it could not coalesce into a large-scale uprising that is both armed and through civil uh, resistance and disobedience because of this political problem the Palestinians have of not having the kind of representatives who can push for it. Iran will definitely encourage Hamas. Will look to escalate it. To the most radical anti-American actor in the region and believes that this is an opportunity for them to unify the entire entire Islamic community against the U.S. My doubts persist as to whether the Arab street will be in one voice anymore. I think they are tired. They are resigned to the fate, which is inch by inch the settlements are increasing. They think that Trump move will simply encourage more Jewish settlers to go into East Jerusalem, West Bank, and eat away whatever little prospects they have of an independent state of their own. It's not looking very good. It's very grim and unfortunately that means there is also a recipe for violence. So I think we will see violence and violent acts of resistance. This could be a terrorist sort. This could be like small scale incidents but I don't see how a very very beaten and jaded uh, Palestinian community which has been under a lot of pressure could actually muster the resources to create a new intifada. Is there any chance that other international players can effectively intervene now to move forward and to avert some of the possible violence, you know, escalations that are on the brink right now. The Saudi Arabian monarchy can play a role, unfortunately, in the past being very close to Israel, so much so that they've lost the faith of the Palestinians. The Saudis had a peace plan way back in 2002. Uh, it is rumored that just before this big blow came from Trump, the Saudi crown prince apparently had threatened Mahmoud Abbas that he has to accept a kind of a moth-eaten Palestinian state uh, and give up a lot of the claims and agree to uh, water down Palestine uh, or even not even that on behalf of Israel. If the Saudis respond to this, they can have an impact. But unfortunately, they are obsessed with containing Iran right now. They may like what is happening because that way they feel like they can consolidate and, and isolate Iran. But my own view is that this step will actually not strengthen Israel so much. It could actually end up strengthening Iran more geopolitically and regionally because Iran is the only force, as I said before, that has consistently not done a compromise on the Palestinian issue despite being a Shiite power. The prospects of any other regional player like Turkey, Saudi, I mean, they are all horrified with what Trump has done. But as the weeks proceed, it looks like Saudi, unfortunately, is not going to uh, play the kind of peace broker role that it should ideally do. It can do. It is now very close to Israel and, of course, traditionally, it has voice 
at least a token support for the Palestinian cause. But I think Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman has got a completely different agenda. He's really least concerned about the fate of the Palestinians because of his obsession with checking the Iranian influence. So the region as a whole, if you see, is like a powder keg. We are seeing the war in Yemen erupting uh, time and again and the violence of the suffering there. In the Syrian settlement, we don't know how it will end up, although the war is kind of winding down. Further afield in Libya, there's, you know, unsettled. The lack of stability means that there's no concerted eye or vision for the Palestinian question and to resolve the Israel-Palestine dispute right now. So all that Trump has done is added fuel to fire and made it a lot worse.